when it comes to doing your nails, the prep stage is really important. And the first thing we're gonna do is deal with the cuticle area here. So I've got some of the Miley cuticle remover, which has a lovely scent from having the peppermint oil in. And all you're gonna want to do with this is squeeze oh, a little bit out and pop that around your cuticle. You're then gonna leave that to sit on there for about a minute, just to let it take action. You don't wanna leave it on too long, a minute should be enough. And while I'm letting that sit there, we've got two different things we can use, tools wise, for our cuticles. So we've got the metal cuticle pusher that I've got here. Now this is quite a sharp tool. This is the Miley tool. Um, please be careful using this, not only on the skin of your cuticles, but also on your nail plate. The last thing we want to be doing is digging that into our nail plate when we're trying to remove any cuticle from the area and causing damage. So your other option is uh, what's commonly known as an orange wood stick. So this is a much gentler tool. It's made of wood. It's not quite as severe as the metal. So this is what I'm gonna use today. So now we've let our remover sit for a little while. I'm just gonna take the orange wood stick and I'm just going to gently push the cuticle. We don't wanna be pushing under the skin. We don't wanna be being forceful at all with this. We're just gently pushing along, making sure that any cuticle, which is the dry skin that you get on the nail plate around this area, not this piece of skin, this is working on the nail plate to remove any dead cuticle. I'm gonna take that right round down into the sides and make sure we've got all of that nice and clean and any dead skin is removed. And what that's gonna do is it's going to create a nice surface for your products to attach. So, clean that off there and then just a little bit of prep and wipe from Miley and give that a good clean. So, now we've dealt with our cuticles, we want to prepare the nail plate. And what I'm going to use to do that is I'm going to use the Miley 100 to 180 grit file. So the smaller the number, the smoother the surface. So the 100 side, the yellow side, is a lot smoother than the 180 side, which is quite a bit rougher. So for prepping your nails, you only really need the 180 side, to be honest with you. And all we're going to do with that is we're just going to slightly rough up the nail plate. So not applying pressure and just see how that's removing the shine. And all we're doing is creating a nice surface for our base coat to stick to when we move on to that part of the process. So just give that around the cuticles, anywhere you're going to want to put your gel. You want to have that gentle etching into the surface of the nail plate. You can do this with a buffer if you feel like that's enough. Um, personally, I prefer to use a file and get a really good etch in there. But just remember, be gentle. You don't want to cause any damage to your nail plate. If anything starts feeling hot or you're getting discomfort or redness, then stop. You don't need to be filing that hard. So I'm pretty happy that I've covered all of the nail plate there with my file. So again, with your Miley Prep and Wipe solution, give everything a good clean, remove any dust, and that is that nail prepped and ready to start applying our base coat. So the base coat I'm going to use is the Miley base coat. Um, I'll just pop this there, move it off there. And I apply this just as if I was applying a coloured polish. You don't want a thick layer. And if you start just a little bit back from the cuticle and push your brush up, giving it a little wiggle, you'll say you can get really neat and close to that cuticle without touching your skin. And then just bring it down around the sides, making sure you've covered 
the whole nail plate with your base coat. And like I say, just needs to be a nice thin coat on here. And then once you've done that, you can pop your hand in the lamp for 60 seconds. 60 seconds with the LED Miley Pro lamp that I'm using. So we've got our cured base coat. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a polygel extension using a what's known as a paper form. So the ones I've got here, these are just the ones that I happen to use, the ones I've got at the moment. They come in all sorts of different shapes um, and colours. Whatever works best for you, whatever you like, these just happen to be the ones that I like and have at the moment. So you remove the backing paper and then you've got a sticky surface all over the form here. You'll see you've got some perforations. Your most important one is the one at the top of the form here and the one around the little circle here. It's the little circle. You want to pop this out because this is where your finger's going to go. Don't throw this little disc away. This is going to go back onto the form and this is going to help us create a nice C curve structure. When I show you, if I open this top perforation, I take the form, roll it slightly, and that's going to help shape the underneath of your nail to a nice curve. So having that extra layer on there is going to hold that curve in place for you while you're working. So a little roll. And then this is just how I apply them. I'm by no means a professional with forms. And what I do is I will close the end of the form, keep these little bits as open as I can, and then slide this under the free edge of the nail. Don't force it. It doesn't want to be forced in there and uncomfortable. Check it straight and then come underneath the nail and squeeze so that this is adhering to your skin underneath. And you want to position the form so it's almost completely straight. A little downward tilt isn't terrible. You don't want it hanging down here. You don't want it pointing upwards. You want it fairly straight to the natural. To the natural shape of your nail. So once you've done that, you can leave the wings open. Some people like to close them. Some people trim them off, whatever works best for you. I'm personally happy with them just how they are. You can squeeze this down a little, little bit further if you're creating a shorter nail. So I tend to only go between the one and the two on these forms. But once you pop the form on, have a little look, see what's gonna work right for you. And let's get into the fun part and play with the poly gel. So I've got all three of the my poly gels here. So we have nearly nude, clear and perfect pink. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use perfect pink today. So I'll just pop these other tubes to the side. And we open this up. And we've got this lovely thick gel. It's almost like a paste. I think I described it to someone the other day as a, a, like a thick toothpaste. So we've got that. And then what we're also going to need is our Miley Slip Solution. A little dish to put that in. So I've just got the little dappen dish that Miley do sell. All the products that I'm using today are linked down in the description. So if you want to pop along and buy what I'm using, it will be there for you to find. And we're also going to need one of these little jewel tools. So again, I've got the Miley one. You've got a brush on one end and you've got a little spatula on the other. So we'll pop some slip solution into our little dish. Don't need a huge amount. You can always add more. You can't put anything back in this bottle. So it's better to be on the side of caution when you're pouring that out rather than waste a load of product. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get our gel and I tend to take about a small pea sized amount, scoop it onto the spatula and then roll and wipe that onto your nail. So you don't want to be putting it back here right next to your cuticle and you don't want to be putting it right on the end or on the form. You want to get it kind of in the middle of where you imagine that full nail length to be. So you can see there, I've put that on and it is not moving. It's not going anywhere. You can do whatever I want. 
have a little dance about. And that is just gonna stay where it's put until I start manipulating it with the slip solution. I'm just gonna wipe off the end of my spatula so I'm not getting bits of gel everywhere. I'm getting all sticky. And then with the brush end of the tool, you want to pop that into your slip solution. Give it a good dab around. Make sure you haven't got any air bubbles in your brush. And then drain it off on the side of your dish. You want this brush damp, but you don't want it soaking. So what I then do is blot out the moisture and that should be ready to use. So you can see there, I'm not getting all stuck to the product. It's working around quite nicely. If you're sticky, pop it back in, your brush is too dry. If everything's flopping about everywhere, you've used too much liquid. So it's quite a good idea to get a little ball of the product when you first open it. If you're not used to using polygel, and to test the consistency by just placing this on a practice tip or even just a plain sheet of paper, anything that you've got that you don't mind putting a bit of gel on and have a little play about with the consistency of the product. So once I'm happy with how I've got my brush, the first thing I'm going to do is work on the cuticle area. So I'm going to gently start patting and pressing this back towards the cuticle and you want to get close, but not touching. And then once you're happy that you've got that close to the cuticle, you can start bringing it down into your side walls. So working on the area that's gonna cover your natural nail first, on the cuticle and side walls. And then gradually, you want to keep a lot of your product towards this area, you're going to create a nice apex here and that's going to give you a good strong nail. So what we can do is we can start pulling this product forwards, making sure we're not pulling it all along, but just bringing it gently down onto the form. So I'm going to take this down to probably about the second line or halfway between. So you can see that shape that I'm forming there, this curve that comes up gently from the cuticle and goes down towards the end of the nail. So that's called your apex. And that's the structure you need to build to make sure you've got a nice strong nail. Some people like to do them quite high. Some people like to make them quite thin. Whatever works best for you. This is probably gonna be a bit of trial and error for you when you're first working with the product to see how you like to do your nails, how they last best for you. And then what I'm also doing when I'm working is I'm looking down the barrel of the nail. So as well as having the nice curve coming this way, you want to have a nice curve over the top of here. You want to have a nice dome shape. So keep wetting that brush when you need to. Keep checking your nail from all angles. And the great thing about this is you can stop, you can have a good look around, your gel isn't going anywhere. It's just gonna go where you tell it to. Takes a little bit of getting used to at first. I'm not gonna lie and say that I just picked up a tube of polygel and magically was able to work with the product. But once you get the hang of it, it's a really, it's almost quite a fun process to do. Well, I think so anyway. And I would hope that if you're watching this, you're, you know, gonna find this as fun as I do. So keep checking that nail. Making sure you've got a nice structure from all angles. A bit of a funny one is to try and check the other side of your nail, but yeah. And then just with your damp brush, go around your side walls. neaten that shape. Your shaping at the free edge and everything on the form doesn't need to be perfect but the neater you can get things around your side walls and cuticle the less filing in that area and near your skin you're going to have to do which is always a bonus and the smoother you can get your surface the better less filing you're going to do. So that's the beauty of this product you can do a lot of the work with the brush and then not have to do as much filing at the end. So check that we are happy with that. If 
for a sculpted nail like this, you may find you need a slightly higher apex than if you were to use a tip because you're building all the, all the nail up, all of the structure with gel rather than with relying on a plastic tip. So I'm fairly happy with that shape that I've got there now. I'm going to pop that in the lamp and I'm going to cure it for 60 seconds. So an alternative way to do your sculpting is to work with more than one ball of poly gel. If you're finding that using just one ball or one blob of product is just too much to do at once, working on all the different areas, this is a little trick that I've picked up that I find to be much easier personally. So taking a smaller blob of poly gel, what we're going to do is we're going to pop that at the end of the nail and we're going to use this to create a nail tip. So I just find this is a little bit more accurate and an easier way for me personally to work. So you want a little bit of the product on the nail and then you're going to bring this forward onto the form. Blend any on the nail, you want to blend that back as flat as you can so that you've got a flat surface to work on when you start adding more poly gel. And all I'm going to do is pull that little bit forward. I possibly should have used a little bit more but that's fine. If you find you haven't got enough product, you can just go and add a little bit more on there. And that's not going to cause any problems at all. This product blends back into itself really, really easily. So just keeping that brush nice and damp with the slip solution. And you can see that's already just blending in fairly easily as if it were one piece of gel. Don't forget to come down and build the side of the nail. And you want it to look like it's coming naturally out of your nail. So you can just follow that line. And just take the length down a little bit on that, I think. And you want this fairly thin. This isn't going to be your full structure of your nail, so it's it's just creating yourself a little template. So you can do this if you don't have any tips, or if you, like me, prefer to build a little bit of a template for yourself, and then work on the structure of your nail. So. So my form shifted slightly there, so all I'm doing is just pinching underneath to make sure it is well stuck onto my finger. And then once I'm happy with that, we can pop that into the lamp. So you can see it isn't, you know, the neatest thing in the world, but that is good enough for the start of us creating this extension. So I'll pop that in the lamp for 60 seconds. So now that little tip here is cured, it's nice and solid. It will still have a tacky layer. So try and avoid touching that. And obviously you've still got your sticky base coat back here. You are going to either keep the form on if you're not confident that this is gonna stay as it is, or you can remove the form at this stage. I quite like to remove the form to give myself a little bit more room to work with, because as you can see, these are quite deep and I've got quite a bit of distance from the table if I'm to put this down or try and pop it into the lamp. So to remove your form, pinch it away from the tip and just gently pull it down. Be very gentle at this stage, particularly because you've got quite a thin little structure going on here. Unwrap the sides and we can get rid of that. So we've got this little funny looking nail tip that we've created. Don't worry about the shape around the free edge at the moment. We're going to sort that out at the end when we do our finished filing. 
So now you're ready to start building the structure of your nail. Take your poly gel. And at this point, you want a larger amount than you use to create the tip. So again, about a small pea sized amount. And you're gonna put this about halfway down the nail that you've created. And then we're gonna get our slip solution again onto the brush. I'm going to start pushing this back, working towards the cuticle to start. Remember, we're gonna take that as close as we can to the cuticle, but we don't want to be touching the skin. So push that down to the cuticle and start working down into your side walls. Just pop in that product where you want it to go. Keep the majority of the product here so we can use that to build our apex. You don't want to be pulling that flat because then you're not going to have a nice strong nail. So you do need to take it down towards the free edge. And I like to go along the sides first. Keep moving your finger around so you can check all the different angles of how that nail is going to look. And just keep pushing and pulling the poly gel where you want it to go and you can see we're starting to get a nail out of it now. It will be a slightly odd shape but it's a work in progress. Keep going on those cuticles. You don't want to just concentrate on one area and then move on to the next. You want to keep going back round, checking the shape of your nail as you work. So over the top, making sure that is a nice curve appearing there as well. Bring the product down again. You don't want these sides to be thick but you do need enough product on there to have a strong nail. So, keep checking your angles. That's probably one of the most important things when you're doing this. If you want to eliminate as much filing as possible, you need to keep working around the nail, checking your angles. Yeah, it takes a bit longer, but the beauty of the poly gel is it is a product that you can infill so once the nail has grown out you can go back and you can infill the product and i do actually demonstrate how to do that with the way i use dual forms on that video so be sure to check that out because that's going to help you when you come to infill your nails in one to two weeks time depending on how fast they've grown some people even get three weeks it's entirely down to how your natural nails grow underneath the enhancement. So I've got most of the shape and structure that I want there. They always look a bit odd when they're still a work in progress. And we've got a little bit of excess there. So I'm just gonna sweep that off and make sure it's removed before we cure because you don't want a big blob of gel cured on the end of your nail. So any excess, just get rid of. And then what I like to do is make sure my brush is nice and damp and then just go around the very edges to make sure there's no product on my skin. So going along the side walls and then just with the very tip of my brush, a little sweep around the cuticle, so that I know I've got no product that I'm gonna cure stuck onto my skin. So, once I'm happy with that, and I might just be faffing at this stage, to be honest, but like I say, the more you do at this stage, the less filing you've got. Once we've got a reasonable structure going on there, 
and we've got rid of any because I'm wearing gloves I am happy to touch that product and take it off please don't touch this with your bare skin use the tool that you've got to remove that there we go so I'm gonna now pop that in the lamp for a 60 second cure so we've got our cured nail here nice and solid feels nice and strong the next thing we're going to do is we're going to refine the shape of our nail with a file or a couple of files so before you do that you have got a slight ever so slight tacky layer on top of that nail tacky is fine if it's soft and squishy you haven't cured it if it's not nice and solid like this it needs to go back in the lamp so it's a 60 second cure with led and a two minute cure with UV. So we'll give that nail a nice good clean. And you can see underneath the nail, you've got a lovely smooth surface that's been formed using your paper form. I have got a little bit of excess there, but I can get rid of that with the file. That's not a problem. So you've got a nice curve in the end of your nail. That's going to keep things nice and strong. That's a good structure. You've got your apex up here. And then if you look down the barrel of the nail, You've got a lovely dome shape here. So, filing. I like to use a couple of files. I've got my Miley 100 to 180 grit file again. Polygel, although it's lovely and strong and rigid, files really, really smoothly. So you don't have to be too, too vigorous with your file, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by just coming on my side walls here don't be digging into your skin, you just want to be filing the product. So I'm just going to come up here, I'm going to straighten out those side walls. Again, this file is barely touching my finger, I'm just working on the free edge. So, bring that up so it's nice and straight. Same on the other side, you can see I've had a little bit of a blob there. So we just file that up. You can see how quick it is to file. It's such a lovely soft product to file. There we go. And then for the actual side wall where you're working near your finger, don't come straight down. Tilt the file slightly over your nail. And take your time with this. The pressure needs to be coming this way towards the nail, not downwards towards your finger. So I'm using a file that's already had a little bit of use. But if you have got a brand new file, the other thing you can do is key in your edges. So I've got a newer file here, and when they do come, they are quite sharp along this little corner edge. All you do is get your older file and just give it a little run at an angle. So I'll turn it this way so you can see I'm just doing this here. And that'll just take off your sharp corner. And that is gonna help avoid you cutting your finger inadvertently with your file. So I'm going to come into that side wall, make sure it's nice and neat. And then the other side. And then you can start if you want, coming around to shape the free edge. So I tend to go for an oval almond shaped nails, which you will have seen if you've seen any of my posts on Instagram or Facebook. So I'm going to do exactly the same as I would usually do today. Going back and forth when I'm shaping the nails, so I'm not just shaping one side and then trying to catch up on the other side. I'm making sure that I'm balancing this from both sides. And that's going to give you a more symmetrical finish. So once I'm happy with that, we can now start working around the cuticle area. So again, don't come straight down, come over the top of the nail and use sort of a curving motion when you're doing your cuticles. So you can see there, I'm even using the smoother 180 side of the file and I'm still doing enough to shape the surface. Slightly quicker with the 100 side. And once we're happy that we've got the cuticle nice and flush and you can see I turn my nail sideways, you've got this lovely 
curve coming up from the cuticle and down to your free edge, which is ideal. So then for the top surface, I like to support the nail. Looking down the barrel of it, I want to smooth out this area. So I'll then come towards myself with the file. Checking that nail from all angles. Just make sure I'm not filing it too thin at any point. You can come over the top in a nice curve. Again, you can come back to your side and check how that shape is forming. And then more into the barrel of the nail. Just keep moving that file around, keep moving your finger, check all your angles. and shape that nail up how you would wear it. However you want, whether it's square, coffin, little almondy sort of oval shape like I've done. Just be gentle, be patient, take your time. And once you're happy with what you've got on there, I'm fairly happy with the shape of that nail. You can then grab a, sorry about that, I should have got that out earlier, a white buffing block, just to refine the nail surface. Anytime you finish filing, give the nail a good cleanse with your prep and wipe solution. Make sure you go underneath as well. Get rid of any little bits of dust. Dust and fluff are your worst nightmare when doing nails. You don't want that stuff anywhere near. Get it gone. And now we're ready for top coat. So I'm gonna use the Miley no wipe top coat. Personally, I prefer a no wipe top coat. You don't have to cleanse afterwards. You just get this lovely, smooth, shiny surface straight out the lamp. So I like to hold my hand like this when I'm painting nails on myself because I find it easy to look at. A lot of the time if I'm doing my non-dominant hand, I'll go between this and this so that I can actually steady my finger because yeah, you can get a bit wobbly doing doing the hand that you're not used to using. So again, just as we did with the base coat, pop that brush down, push it back towards the cuticle. Curve it down onto your sidewall, keeping the product off your skin, and then down the length of the nail. So you can see I have actually got a little bit of top coat on my skin there. So you can do two things. You can use your orange wood stick to just gently wipe that away. Or you can even use the brush end of your tool with a little bit of slip solution on and give that a little clean off. Just so that you're not putting that gel on your skin in the lamp and curing it. So nice, shiny top coat on there. Again, check from all angles. Make sure you've fully covered the nail. The amount of times I've not checked, I've pulled the nail out of the lamp and had a bit missing off the side. And it's so frustrating if you've been working on your nails and you do that. You can fix it, yeah, but it's nicer if you don't have to. So pop that in the lamp for the final cure of 60 seconds. Then once that nail is cured, we can come in with our final stage, which is the cuticle oil. 
So this is the Miley Nail and Cuticle Oil that I'm using here with almond oil. So it smells absolutely lovely. You just want to pop a little blob on there. Massage it well into your finger, making sure you're going underneath, all over the top of the nail. And there we have a poly gel extension created using paper forms. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions at all, if anything wasn't clear, please do come down into the comments section, have a chat. Sorry, I've just kicked my tripod there. That's not very professional of me. Um, if you would like to learn more about Miley products or talk to more people who are using them, meet the other brand ambassadors, please do come over to the Miley My Look Facebook page. Uh, join up, join the conversation. We're currently running a weekly challenge where we take a piece of artwork, post it in the group, and then we ask people to create a look inspired by that piece of artwork, which is really fun and love to see you joining on there. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.